Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. So today I've got something really cool and new and exciting to show you. So um, I have finally received an X Station. Uh, so an X Station is an optical disc emulator for the original PS1. Um, this is a really awesome product because nowadays um, it's actually kind of hard to find one of these that still works. The the lasers that were used by Sony, they're all collectively starting to fail and um, Technically, you can buy replacement lasers, but they're honestly pretty expensive. In fact, sometimes they're just as expensive as the console itself, and uh, they're, you know, knockoffs uh, that are made in China, so who knows how long they're going to last. And so, you know, if you're really fond of your childhood PlayStation and you want to be able to play games on there, then what the X-Station does is it allows you to play games directly off of an SD card, so it emulates the optical drive that uh, that's in here. So what I'm going to do today is take apart this PS1. Um, this guy happens to have a bad laser, so uh, it's totally useless as it is anyway. So we're going to re replace this uh, with the X station. I'll show you guys how to do the installation. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to start by just taking apart the console. And um, this console that I have here, this is a 5500 series um, PS1, and you can tell which version it is. Uh, by looking at the label. So not every PlayStation is compatible with this mod. You have to take a look and see um, which version you've got. Uh, the types that are compatible are listed on the Castlemania Games website. But um, but yeah, I would recommend, if you can, to find a 5501 because that's also compatible with the PS1 Digital HDMI mod. Um, so yeah, I've removed the six screws that are on the on the bottom there, and then you can just lift up this top here. And disassembly of this console is actually very, very simple. So. Sony actually puts arrows um, in the locations where um, you've got to put screws in and take screws out. So we're going to go ahead and remove those screws really quick. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and remove this cable here. This is for connecting the power supply board to the logic board. And we're also going to remove this guy here, which is just friction fit into place and this, and those are the two sets of cables that connect the optical assembly to the logic board. Um, this little cable here, this is for the controller ports. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the upper portion of the RF shield. There we go. And like I said before, you've got a couple more screws left behind, but um, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but Sony helpfully puts arrows where they are all located, so later on it's easy to put things back where they belong. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is a few little modifications to the case and to the RF shielding on the bottom. And uh, this is necessary just because there's going to be a ribbon cable that loops through here, and so we just need to make space for it. So the first thing we're going to do is just remove these little posts right here, and I'm going to just use some flush cutters and just snip them out of the way. So that takes care of that. They don't have to be perfect, they just need to be mostly removed. And then here's the RF shielding on the bottom, and so this whole region over here needs to be cut, and uh, thankfully that's pretty simple. So you just have to come in, and you see this like little section here, you can just like snip with your flush cutters. And now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use this uh, set of pliers, just kind of move it back and forth and work it. If you have like a vise in your, in your workshop, that's also very handy. Because you could just grab this whole section with the vise and go back and forth. I happen to not own one of those, but, you know, it's no big deal. I'm just going to do this really quick. Okay. So that's that. Um, I'm going to just flatten this out because I don't want this to come up and either cut my hand or cut the ribbon cable that's going to be coming here. So just out of precaution, just flatten this out. There's a little bit of extra... extra metal shielding here too and I'm going to cut that too but that's easy just come in like this and there we go so the uh, the case is ready so let's go ahead and move on to the uh, the logic board okay so the next step in the installation is um, revolving around this particular chip here so there's a couple of different pins that we're going to have to lift 
um, off of this uh, board here. And uh, specifically, it's uh, pins 45, 46, 47, 56, 74, 77, 78, and 80. Um, so I'll put that in the description so that if anyone's um, trying to do this, then you know they have a, a good idea of what to do. But um, you can see how the chip is labeled just by looking at the board here. So you can see here's here's pin 80 right here. So it's just a few on on this side, and then I think three on this side. So eight total. So five here, three here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. But basically what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be applying heat and we're going to be using these these fine forceps to uh, to lift up the pins. It's a few of them. I've got three <laughs> over here. It's actually quite tricky because there's one that's sitting in between these three that does not get lifted. So you've got to keep that guy down while simultaneously pulling up all the others. I'm going to have to go back in here and confirm everything with the microscope and uh, probably clean this up a little too. I think there's still some... There's a little bit of a bridge here with the solder, so I gotta clean that up. There we go. But uh, but yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be continuing to do. All right, well, that's uh, basically what we gotta do here. And uh, it's definitely difficult. And, and you could see that I think probably the, this side is the worst because you've gotta count six away from the corner here to get this guy. And then this section is also very tricky because one pin gets left behind and then all of these guys get removed. And then also two pins over here get left behind. So, uh, so yeah, but it's all finished now. I'm gonna go ahead and verify everything looks fine underneath the microscope, make sure that there aren't any bridges, and I'm just gonna inspect the general health of those pins. I just don't wanna have them damaged or anything. Um, all right, so, so that's, uh, we're gonna take care of that now, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so the next step is gonna be soldering on this little adapter board, and basically this is gonna tap into all of those points um, where that chip used to uh, contact and it's gonna basically bypass uh, what that chip used to do. So, so this is the opposite side of the board, this is the underneath, underside of the board, and um, the kit actually comes with two different QSBs. So this version here, this is intended for a PlayStation that's the 1000X series, it's like the earliest model of PlayStation. Uh, that's not what we have, we don't need this. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is using this little board here, this is for the 5000 series um, version. So what you gotta do is basically, um, you know, you can, you can find an image with um, where the install points are, but you can see that there's a whole bunch of solder points on this QSB, and you just gotta make sure that it's held in place and that everything is lined up, and then once that's all lined up, you can go ahead and start soldering everything into position. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and start doing right now.
Alright, so most of the solder points have been taken care of, but there's actually two places that we are going to have to, um, we're gonna have to scrape away some of the solder resist. So you see there's like a little point right here. So in order to access this area, you just have to scrape away the solder mask. And uh, I have a scalpel for this. There you go. So it's a little easier to do this um, underneath the microscope, but basically you can either use a small fiberglass pen or a scalpel and you can scrape, scrape away the solder resist over here. And uh, when it's nice and shiny, then you know you're kind of good to go. And then at that point, if I add some flux and if I solder this region, then we should be okay. Okay, there we go. So that one's all set. So I'm gonna go ahead now and move to the final one, which is, yep, it's right here. I'm just gonna shine some extra light on it because I can't see it too well. There we go. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna use the tip of my blade. This blade's been through a lot, but you don't need something special for this. In retrospect, it was probably even been easier to do this before I added the board, but that's okay. You live, you learn. Okay, that should be enough. Pretty much good. All right, so I think now this QSB has been completely installed. All right, so one of the last things we're going to have to do here is uh, we're going to have to tap into the clock signal. So this is the crystal oscillator right over here. And we're going to start by just getting rid of this little surface mount resistor here. And um, just got to put some solder on both sides and it'll just come right off. And we're gonna go ahead and tin this little test point right here. And now, um, final thing is I'm gonna just take a wire and I'm gonna solder it to that test point. And then the other end is going to go to a pad that's on the QSB. All right. So there we go, that's the last little connection and I think we're basically good to go now. All right, so to finalize the installation, we're gonna go ahead and pull the bales back and we're gonna take this flex cable and insert it in with the blue component facing towards you and then you just snap these bales back into position. All right, so I've reassembled the entire case and screwed the uh, RF shield back into position and so now the final thing we got to do is install the actual X station board itself. So um, you can see I took the other end of the flex cable and I installed it here with the blue side facing up like this. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to install these little feet to um, stabilize this thing so that when it's standing it's uh, you know going to stay in a fixed position. So you see these like three holes here that um, they don't have like anything silver on them they're just Holes, so that's where the feet go. So there's two feet that go on one side here, and, and these, of course, come with the kit. And you just push in like that. And there we go. All right, so those are the three feet. So now we're gonna have to get the cable kind of into position here. Um, I believe it goes, yes, it goes like this. So, so what you wanna do is just kind of bend it a little bit like this. Um, and since I'm testing right now, I'm not gonna bend, you don't wanna crease the cable, the cable can can get damaged. So you just kind of put a little bit of pressure on it just to kind of have it stay in position. Um, and then down here too, there's also another bend that you can that you can make. And then again, that just kind of helps to get everything stabilized. And uh, yeah, that's that's a good, good enough um, for now. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, test this thing out and see if it works. 
All right, so uh, I got everything all assembled, and I just wanted to kind of let you guys know about a stupid mistake that I made, and so that way, if you're doing this installation, you don't make the same mistake I did. So I had everything assembled, but I did not have this front lid on, this top lid on, and I was trying to power things on, but it just kept going to the memory card management men menu. It was not going to the... Um, the X station loader screen, so I thought maybe I had done something wrong, but actually no, I had not. Um, you actually need this top cover on because something needs to be pressing the little switch here to indicate that the lid is closed. So the X station uh, doesn't uh, bypass that. So if the lid is open, then um, the X station menu is not going to load properly. So what I've done here now is I've just put the lid on top, and so when I power it on, it's going to go straight to the X station menu. And it basically loads just as though it's a real game. So what I'm going to do is put a link in the description for how to set up the SD card, because that's outside of the scope of this video. What I really wanted to do here was just show you how to actually install the X station. Um, but, but yeah, I went ahead and I set up the, um, the card. It was very simple. And I just put a game on there. It's Soul Blade. This is uh, my test game that I use to um, test PlayStation 1s and PlayStation 2s. So it's really simple. You just drag and drop your game on, and then you just hit uh, the X button to load. And that's about it. And uh, it pretty much works from there. So, you know, this is a really nice option if you've got an old PS1, maybe your childhood one, and you really want it to work again, and uh, it has a bad laser, because this lets you play your entire library very conveniently on an SD card, and uh, all the games work perfectly. All right, so if you guys like this content, it would be great if you could give me a thumbs up or perhaps subscribe to the channel. Uh, I have Fix It Friday videos out every Friday. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.